It's not too yeah, choppy. Yeah. yeah, everything's fine. Cool. Same here. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for uh, checking out today's live stream video whenever you're getting a chance to catch it. Today we have with us Dell, who is an ex-vegan from what I can gather, and he will be sharing with us his story, um, his vegan story, now his ex-vegan story, whatever the hell story, it's his story, so I'm just going to <laughs> shut up and uh, let him tell you what's up. So just briefly, uh, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself, whatever you feel like sharing, no pressure, and you know maybe start off with telling us how and why that's always important you got into veganism take it away my man all right so about in the year 2009 that's when i discovered veganism and before then i had a lot of health problems when i was younger uh, i was obese just really huge and um uh, Doctors told me that I had uh, pre-diabetes and if I didn't try to change my diet or anything that I would eventually develop diabetes and other serious health problems. So I started to change my diet, uh, went on a low fat diet, lost weight, I put back on the weight again. And I was looking just, I was looking for a diet that would fix all my problems. And um, at the time I was online reading and I, found veganism um, on YouTube, this person talked, I don't remember the person's name, but they were talking about it. I said, let me do some more research. So I started doing research and all the research I read said, you know, meat causes cancer and saturated fat is gonna, is gonna clog your arteries and give you a heart attack. So I said, so th this has to be the, the answer. It must be it. So I cut out the meat I cut out dairy, I just cold turkey, just went straight to veganism. And um, at first I was eating a lot of soy dogs, you know, the, the mock meats. And, um, but then I started to read into soy. Instead of soy, you know, increases estrogen and how it's processed, it's highly processed food. So I cut out soy and I started eating hemp seeds and chia seeds, <laughs> all the, uh, the, the phytates and whatnot I was getting. Let me just ask you real quick. Yeah. So the ethical side of things was never really a concern for you or? Oh, yes, it was. It, but, but you got into it first and foremost for health yeah. reasons. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. continue, on, continue on with that. And then if you could hit on the ethics, how, okay. that, how that became part of your veganism at what point and anything you want to you know, contribute as far as that goes. So at the time I was doing the veganism, I was adding all the hemp seeds. I was taking moringa, uh, spirulina, corella. I was taking a lot of different herbs, trying to get nutrients. I didn't take any supplements or anything because I'm not a person that believes that you need to take little things, especially on a diet that's optimal. So um, I did that for about five months. I mean, I lost weight, you know, of course, but it wasn't it wasn't really what i wanted i wanted to build muscle and be lean and the vegan diet wasn't doing that for me um as far as ethics are concerned i i deeply cared about the animals i didn't want to harm any animals uh you know i read that um uh animal agriculture is is causing all, all the suffering how they ended the factory farming um it's destroying the environment the pollution so i just i did it for the ethics too i did it for spiritual reasons too uh i did it for every reason and uh but after that five months uh i was about 16 i believe and um I, everything just came crashing down i mean i i, I used to wake up in the morning with joint pain, just to complain to my mother that I had joint pain. Um, I was, and this, this wasn't the case when you were overweight. You didn't have joint pain when you were overweight. No, no, I didn't have any joint pain or anything like that. Um, but as soon as I went on the vegan diet at 15 for five months, I had joint pain. Um, I felt more tired despite eating. I used to eat 
a lot of fruit and like 10 bananas in one sitting and I was still hungry. So, you know, and I was eating salads and, but they never really fulfill you. You know, you eat them one hour, two hours later, you're going to the restroom, you know, and drinking a lot of water, lemon water, lime water to detox. Sorry, oh, no supplements? No supplements, no. None whatsoever. No. And so just just for clarity, because, you know, not to pry too much, but you look significantly older than 16. So how long ago was this that you became vegan? About a decade ago. Okay. And yeah. at that time, because I wasn't paying much attention to veganism, were supplements part of the conversation as far as... Uh, being healthy on the vegan diet or was that something that wasn't really being advertised too much as that's anything that you needed to to supplement the diet well uh, I basically b12 that's what at the time was oh you know the the vegan experts weren't sure if you could get b12 from the spirulina and the corella and the algae so you know supplement with that and uh, I didn't I, but I didn't take any supplements because uh, at the time, also, too, uh, a NATO path was following me, uh, had me on this diet, too. And they're telling me about Moringa has everything that you need, if you can read about it. It says that it has all the vitamin A, all the vitamin C. It has more calcium than cow's milk. So I was taking that and, you know, the other herbs, thinking that I would get enough from those things. Yeah. yeah. As far as Moringa goes, I just want to jump in real quick because... I've attempted to grow a few of those trees because I bought into the hype too, even though I, I was never vegan. But, um, you know, I don't know what form you would get it in, probably dried and powdered or maybe capsules or something. Powdered, yeah. Okay. But when you, when you eat the leaf just straight from the tree fresh, it doesn't taste like anything you'd want to eat. It's really spicy. It burns your throat. And yeah. it, it's, just, it's not very good. Um, yeah. And this, this whole idea of it having all these vitamins and nutrients i'm highly skeptical of that and one last thing i'll say about moringa it's extremely difficult to grow at least in my conditions despite what it is they tell you so yeah. just following up just so we're clear you didn't take any supplements but it wasn't really a big deal back then and there was b12 was kind of a gray area because it was said yeah. and i kind of remember this it was said that you can get it from supplements such as chlorella um, yeah, and and it wasn't it wasn't very clear that you must take B twelve. Am I am I getting? Yeah. Clear? Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So, so go go on go on. So um so after the five months, uh, I went to the hospital. Said that my I didn't feel very good. Said that my uh, my blood levels of calcium were low. And I'm like, but how, you know, I'm eating the best diet in the world. How can I have any deficiencies? It's not possible. So uh, what happened was that I just told my neuropath, look, I'm not doing the vegan thing anymore. Uh, I found Western A. Price book, uh, what's it, uh, Physical and Nutritional Degeneration. And I read the whole book and it blew my mind. I'm like, so why am I eating this, this junk? It's not helping me. So I told her that, um, I'm going to stop this continue the vegan diet. I'm just gonna eat eggs, I'm gonna eat meat and see how it goes. And the joint pain went away, I felt better. Um, everything improved. Uh, but the thing about it is that but I wasn't quite done with the vegan diet because when as I got older, I went back on it again for a few months. I guess we're back on. Uh, I just sent an invite back to Dale, that's his name. He should be joining us shortly, and we should be able to continue. Once again, sorry about that. You're back. That's okay. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what happened. These it's things right. sometimes happen. So um, let me just make sure that we're back live. I think we are. That's what Google's yeah. telling me, but you never know with these things. I'm not, I'm not sure at what point we got cut off, but... Um, you were talking about um, going back on the vegan diet for some reason after. Yes. So, in this, so let me get this straight. You went vegan at roughly the age of 15 and after five months, six months, your health just tanked. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then for some odd reason, you went back on the diet. How long after this first uh, episode with, with the vegan diet failing, did you decide to go back to being vegan and why? I went back about when I was 19. Mm -hmm. And I went back because uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't really do away with veganism completely because I was reading about how all the, the meat again, you know, I was reading back to the research, how all the meat is uh, carcinogenic, saturated fat is an issue. And so I decided to give veganism a try. I was saying maybe I didn't do it right. You know, maybe I needed to add in the supplements, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I took the B12 um, pills, but, you know, my health still uh, got bad. My skin, you know, I, I have um, I had acne since I was maybe like 12. Mm -hmm. And um, my skin just got worse, like really, really bad. And um, I was, the same thing happened. I, I had joint pain again. I, I was still hungry. Uh, I went going to the restroom like six, seven times a day. You know, because all you're eating is fiber and basically water, you know, majority, the bulk of the vegan diet. And uh, I went six, back six to seven times a day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah OK, <laughs> it's just yeah. kind of it's just kind of hard to believe. But yeah, um, yeah, continue. And um, I did that for about three months. Came off it again, went back to eating, you know, a sort of Western A price type diet. Then I went back on it again when I was 21. We did that for about five months, came off of it. And, you know, then uh, I developed depression and whatnot. So basically now, 26, I'm not going back to veganism again. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm completely finished with it. It's not, it's not, I tried the raw vegan. I try, I tried the whole food plant based, you know, I tried, um, the Dr. Sabi, I said alkaline diet. Uh, no, no, none of it worked. None of it worked. I, I never really got what I wanted, you know, cause when you read about veganism, it, it claims to be like some magical diet that will fix every health problem and cures all diseases and whatnot it's, you know it's so so how long were you vegan in total in total yeah well i'll say maybe two or three years if you combine everything two or three years and dr sebi was a big influence on you would you say yes yes the first time around yes uh, I was reading about his court case. I believe the court case was in 1989 mm -hmm. or 1988. I think it was 1988, but he won the court, Supreme Court case in 1989. They cured all his people from HIV, uh, lupus, cancer. I think even blindness was another claim, too. I'm not Did, sure. About that one. Has there ever been any proof of this or just people's testimonials, basically? Um, I haven't really found any testimonials besides uh, a celebrity that passed away mm -hmm. called Left Eye, and I guess she went to him, went to his clinic to go on his diet. But besides that, I mean, I, I didn't. Yeah, I never really heard anyone else really talking about him. That's the rapper from TLC. Yeah, I. Yeah, yeah. I Are, am I show, am I showing my age now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I believe she was. Yeah, um, but you know, and you know, other people. I just other people um, online were promoting the vegan diet too, and talking about acid alkaline, and, and they say, oh, you know, if you get your blood level alkaline and, and your organs, everything alkaline. You will not get any disease. No disease can enter the body. But I'm like, you know, now I think about it, I see how foolish that is. You know, because the, there you are getting sick. Yeah. Okay. You know, I meant to ask you because you said you started researching diet 
maybe a decade ago. And is veganism everything? The only diet that you found as recommended or was it just really hot at the moment like why you know was there maybe keto wasn't very big but i'm sure there were other diets that yeah. could be healthy did you yeah, see any competition or anything like that yeah um the lacto vegetarian diet the oval lacto vegetarian diet uh pescatarian um I think that's about it. So basically, plant-based diets, and you yeah, decided to yeah, go with diets. Them, and you yeah. decided on the most extreme one. Um, I know you said you don't really remember like who influenced you that much, but if you could try to pinpoint like where you found out about this diet first and foremost, or like who, if you can try to remember, besides obviously Dr. Sebi, like. You know, if there was a personality or, or someone who, who you trusted, if you will, who seemed like a credible source that you decided to follow, or was it just broadly speaking, you know, articles online and stuff like that, TV maybe, I don't know. Uh, yeah, are you familiar with Dr. Gabriel Cousins? No, who's that? He's a uh, raw, I think he's a raw vegan uh, physician and he, he has some, um, there's a DVD that he has, of people that had diabetes and they went to his clinic. I think his clinic, I don't remember exactly where it is. I don't think it's in Florida, but um, he has a clinic and these people that had diabetes went to his clinic and in 30 days, the, their blood pressure improved. A lot of them stopped taking the medication that they were taking and uh, they were all on a plant-based diet. Um, and they were followed after and they stayed on a plant-based diet and um he, he he influenced me a lot too um what was the version of the diet that this person was selling at the time was it like raw food vegan or yeah, raw foods uh sprouted uh nuts and mm -hmm. seeds and whatnot um things like that um quinoa whole grains um, are they are they still active in the community? I don't I don't think so. I don't think because I'm really, not familiar with the person. No, I don't think so. Okay. He's more old school. Um, David Wolf too. Um, I used to watch a lot of David Wolf. I even have his book, <laughs> uh, his Superfoods book, and he influenced wow. me a lot too. Um, I mean, David Wolf did did uh, did talk about raw milk and stuff so i mean i'm not sure if he was drinking it or what but um yeah he did promote a lot of the plant-based food you know the cacao he's seen that cacao has all these health benefits Does and, it? Uh, <laughs> I, I i don't i the thing about it is that people tend to highlight the good things about the food yeah. but they never talk about the negative effects of it you know it's just Oh, if you eat cacao, you know, it's going to increase your energy. Um, you're going to feel good all the time. It lowers your blood pressure. Um, it's very high in antioxidants, uh, prevents cancer and stuff like that. So I was like, it was like the best food, you know, so I was eating a lot of cacao. I was eating a lot of blueberries, uh, you know, the foods that they say prevent cancer and whatnot. Um, but, you know, they always gave me problems, you know. Mm -hmm. Cacao, the cacao, the cacao tastes like. Terrible. Did you just have acute reactions to cacao as soon as you ingested it, or or more chronic, long term? Effect? Yeah, long term. Yeah, long term. Sometimes it just felt lightheaded, or okay. if I didn't, or tired, if I um didn't have it for like a few a few days, and um, I mean it doesn't taste good. It's it's really hard to get down, so I had to mix it with bananas and stuff. Like making the giant smoothies, and um, yeah, you know I used to eat uh, chocolate bars too, like the ninety percent cacao bars. Would you say you were addicted to chocolate cacao? I wouldn't say I was addicted to it, but I ate it mostly because it didn't really taste good. I really like it per se, but I ate it because of the health benefits. I wanted the antioxidants. Yeah. So I used to eat a lot of things, green tea I used to drink, anything that I read that was high in antioxidants, 
I was I was there. I was eating it. I was drinking it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Whenever I have cacao, I feel, and I don't take it often, but whenever I do, I feel the effects immediately. And it's for me, it's way stronger than coffee, for example. Like, yeah. if, and if I eat too much of it, you know, I get the shakes, and yeah. it's it's very potent. But yeah. some people don't have these reactions. That's why I was yeah. curious about yours. Yeah, I um. I, I was never really, I was never really into coffee. I had it once and I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. So I just never had it again. But, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know how the thing about it is that there's a lot of research saying that, oh, eat sweet potatoes, eat um, tomatoes, lycopene, you know, the, the, um, the better, the carotenoids, eat them. But I don't know how, how potent they are or how like they really work in the human body. Like, are they, like, do we really need to eat them? Do we really need them? That's well, the, the thing that they generally do when they conduct these so-called studies uh, to try to ascertain the, some of the benefits, let's say, of lycopene, they'll extract lycopene, put it in a Petri dish with, like, some cancer cells or something like that, and they'll notice that lycopene kills these cancer cells. So they say, well, you know, it prevents cancer. But, but our bodies... Okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, no problem. Just, just, just for the audience, you know, just because it kills cancer cells in a petri dish, lycopene, that is, that doesn't mean that it's going to do the same thing in your body. Because, well, first and foremost, it has to contend with your very acidic stomach acid. So, will it survive? Who knows? And then, you know, a tomato isn't just lycopene; it's a whole bunch of other things. And you know, who knows about some of the detrimental effects, right? Um, for those who are not familiar tomato is obviously a nightshade and cultures such as native americans and even italians they've understood this very very well because they and i think this is true to this day like they will not eat the seeds or the skin of the tomato even though you know the italians yeah. are known for for tomato pasta or tomato sauce they at the same time understand that the plant is toxic so what i was basically communicating to the audience is that just because you they you, you extract one substance out of the tomato right that doesn't and it does something in a petri dish that doesn't mean it's going to do the same in your body and moreover a tomato is a lot more than lycopene right and there are yeah. other there are toxins in it and yeah. as far as the whole antioxidant thing goes like look we make our own antioxidants plants make their own antioxidants we make the antioxidants for ourselves i think it's pretty safe to assume plants and there are very good explanations for that i won't get into right now but plants basically make antioxidants not for us but for themselves so anyway um i wanted to ask you besides joint pain and maybe you could also delve into a little bit into your uh, blood test but like what were some of the other negative side effects that you had and if you did take a blood test, it sounds like you did. What other deficiencies did you experience on the vegan diet? Uh, when I was in the hospital, they, they didn't really tell me much. All they said was that my calcium was low. I don't know about my iron or my zinc or vitamin, vitamin A or B12 or anything like that. But I just know that I didn't feel good and, it, and then what's affecting how I function and whatnot. So I can't really say anything else about the the vitamins or the other minerals besides the calcium. They're most likely low too, but um, when I was in the hospital, a doctor did tell me like, like what diet am I on? And I told him, oh, I'm on this vegan, you know, acid alkaline diet. And the doctor looked at me puzzled <laughs> saying, like, what kind of diet is that? And he said, oh, you know, if you eat all this alkaline food, you won't get sick. And he's looking at me like... Um, Did you tell him you were vegan specifically? Yeah, well, yeah, eventually, because they asked me, like, what is the diet about? And I was explaining it. And so he was like, he's like, oh, well, you know, a vegan diet. And it's like, yeah, it's it's like a vegan diet, but but it's, it's better than a, your basic vegan diet. <laughs> and he looked at me puzzled, you know, perplexed. And, you know, and um, he told me, you know, this diet doesn't really have the scientific, the acid alkaline diet doesn't have the scientific evidence, you know, to say that this thing is really healthy. And um, 
I, you know, he's told me that, yeah, it's not really a good diet and I shouldn't be on it. I mean, the thing about the diet too, is that if you look at, uh, say these, um, dietary, uh, protocol, there's a lot of foods that he cuts out a lot of foods mm -hmm. that, that he, uh, excludes from you know the human diet and sebi says you know oh you know black people are the are black people before you know they were colonized by whites they only ate plants you know they were basically on basically on a vegan diet and i'm like no that's not true you know anthropologically that's not true they weren't just eating a whole bunch of vegetables and berries all day but <laughs> that's what that's what he you know he says he says you know I mean, he's, he says spinach is toxic, you know, spinach is high in oxalates. I guess he was right about that. But, um, mm -hmm. and he says like black should be eating uh, a vegan diet and white should be eating a diet that's high in meat. Oh, and really? he, you know, yeah. And he asks as if, he, he asks as if, you know, you can't eat, so you can't eat corn because, you know, it's domesticated. You can't eat carrot, it's domesticated. It's like so basically on his diet, like what else are you gonna eat besides some greens that he so promotes? What does he recommend? He basically recommends foods that are non hybridized or not domesticated. And I don't remember the list exactly, but um you can eat certain types of bananas. He says don't eat the huge bananas, get like the more smaller, stocky bananas. Um you can eat certain citrus you can eat um certain vegetables but um i, I on his list um i don't think I, I don't know if you can eat pineapple or not i don't remember exactly but there's a lot of foods i wasn't eating because um they're hybridized but that was the first time i went on the vegan diet but um, a few months into the first time after the third month i'm like you know forget about all these foods that he's taken out i'm going to add them back in but I just added back in the ones that were alkaline. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was, I was I was eating more than before, but still, still ran into the same issues. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what plant foods you can eat right now that aren't hybridized, unless you're going into the woods and picking berries. Yeah, I, it's yeah. a pipe dream. It really it yeah. doesn't exist. But apart from knees hurting and having low energy um can you talk about some of these other symptoms that you had or what what is it that threw you over the the edge and you decided to i'm assuming go back to eating meat or animal products at least well well the thing about it is that um i wanted to gain muscle mass i mean i really wasn't i wasn't really like a like a, a skinny person growing up um even now i do i do my body tends to hold more weight than you know most people but um i basically just wanted to be i wanted to be like healthy the pinnacle of health and um i and i couldn't get that on the vegan diet no matter how many herbs i took no matter how many superfoods i took nothing really got me there i mean i didn't want to just be skinny and not have any muscle mass so you lost weight but you didn't really yeah. put any muscle on is that what no okay no yeah so i i lost fat and as though i lost some water weight whatever but then I started losing muscle because i noticed that my, my physique wasn't as <coughs> as solid as it used to be mm -hmm. uh, i think before i went on the vegan diet i was like 170 and then when i went on the vegan diet my, my weight went down to about 151 and then my weight kept on going down and to, to prevent that i was eating like a lot of um high fat nut butters uh -huh. like um peanut butter almond butter cashew butter coconut butter i was eating a lot of those things to just try to keep my weight from not going too low but i wasn't really gaining the strength that i wanted so what did you eat for protein uh, for protein, I had hemp seeds, a lot of hemp seeds. I had chia seeds. I had a lot of the nut butters I was talking about. I didn't use protein powder. I just ate a lot of nuts. I ate a lot of um, hemp seeds. I ate bird food. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> I ate um, Ezekiel bread. Oh, no. I used to like that stuff, actually. It's pretty tasty, but... Yeah, yeah. Good. I, I only like the uh, the cinnamon raisin one. That's the only one oh. I like. The other ones taste horrible. <laughs> um, I ate... Yeah, that's about it. I'm, I mostly just ate a lot of hemp seeds and the nuts. Oh, jeez. Um, to get all the protein because you know you read about the hemp seed says oh it has more protein than beef to complete i mean it has a complete amino acid profile and all this stuff so i was eating that a lot on, with cereal in the morning with um almond milk or coconut milk and uh it, it just it, it never worked i mean i wanted it to work you know because i you know i wanted that's why i went out back on the vegan diet so many times because i just wanted you know, to say, you know, I'm vegan, you don't have to eat meat, you know, you can eat plants, you can eat fruits, you can eat, you don't have, you don't need the meat to be strong, you don't need the meat to be, to be fit or to be healthy, but it, it just always made everything worse. How many times did you go back and were you thinking that maybe you're not doing it right and that's the reason why you kept going back? I did it about five times, five, six times I wow. went back on it. And, um, yeah, I just feel like I wasn't doing it right. Or maybe I was missing something because I would read about a new superfood or a new herb, you know, that I haven't heard of before. And I'm like, if maybe if I put in this superfood or this herb with everything else, I'll do better, you know, or maybe the, the savvy diet wasn't good. So let me just go on a basic whole foods plant diet and try it again. You know, I was eating a lot of Lara bars too. Um, they have nuts and things in them. It's like a trail mix bar, basically. And, so, uh, yeah, go ahead. And um, I, but now I'm I'm done with that, man. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> so when did you finally decide that you were done with the vegan diet? How long ago was this? About twenty five. Okay. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was done with it. So you were five. going off and on veganism for about a decade. Yeah. Wow, that's some dedication. And every time you would run into problems and you try something different. And so can you like talk about, did you follow like, let's say, you know, raw food, vegan diet and then whole food plant-based? Did you switch protocols or were you just fine tuning one kind of protocol? Yeah, I was just fine tuning it. I was trying Dr. to- Dr. Sebi's. Well, well, the first time I went on it, the first two times, well, the first time I went on it, it was mostly the, the savvy, you know, vegan regimen I was on. But I got rid of that, and then I just did it. Um, but during that time, I was, after the savvy diet, that was, I was on it two months. And then I went and did, a, like, a, a more uh, alkaline diet, but with more foods added. And then I went on uh, all the other times, I kind of just try to do, like, a more whole food plant-based but just add in like more of these superfoods I put back in um, to try to just make it better or get foods that were higher in nutrients, buy more organic food, um, eat more hemp seeds or eat more. Um, there's other seeds too that says on it. Canary seed is the name of it. I don't remember, but, um, and I also, um, there's another guy too that influenced me too, um, mm -hmm. called, um, the Hudi Ma'ara. I've never heard yeah. of that. What is that? <laughs> yeah, he's a um, he's he, he's a guy that promotes the vegan diet. I think he was more popular back in like 2010, 2011. And um, he, he used to talk about the alkaline diet too, but his approach was he used to include more, way more foods than Savy was. Mm -hmm. And um, on his website, I think he, he, he had like a few different websites. Um, but he, on his website, he has, like, he sells herbs. I never really bought, like, any of the herbs that I think he sells. I was just get kind of skeptical. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he influenced me a lot, too. And, you know, other people on YouTube, they were talking about the vegan diet. So I went back on it again and again and again, you know, trying to see if, if, if I can just make it perfect. But mm -hmm. that didn't happen. So... What are you eating now? Now I am eating uh, raw milk. Um, I have raw cheese I get from Whole Foods sometimes. I'm not really a big fan of cheese, but I'll eat it once in a while. Um, I eat yogurt. 
kefir. Um, I have red meat. I'll eat red meat. I usually try to get the grass fed, but it's expensive. So most of the time I don't really get it. Um, chicken I'll eat. Um, and I'll have some vegetables. I might, I might have some sweet potato once in a while, carrots once in a while. I did try fermented vegetables for a week, but that was making me go into the restroom too much. So I cut that out now. Um, and um, for as for fruits, um, just lime, limes. I might squeeze some, you know, some lime juice in a glass and drink that. So it sounds basically like hyper carnivore, like mostly animal products. Yeah, mostly animal products. Um, but the th the thing about it too is that uh, when I was twenty three, right, um, I went to a functional diagnostic nutritionist, and that's more kind of like a holistic approach to health, and. Um, I went to see this woman, uh, Aubrey Thompson, and and she's the one that really helped get my health back on track because at the time, I, before I was like on the vegan diet, and she told me like you can't be on this diet, like it's not it's not for you, it's not helping you. Wait, this is um, a health practitioner that told you this? Yes. I don't I don't I don't believe you because every single doctor, dietitian, nutritionist <laughs> and every single YouTuber I've ever heard of says that only the vegan diet is uh, appropriate for the for the human being. So I'm sorry, I'm going to have to uh suspend my disbelief here and in order to continue to, in order to continue this interview. So I was curious because allegedly a lot of people of African descent descent and Africans, they have issue, they're very lactose intolerant. That's not the case with you? Or is it that pasteurized milk gives you issues, but not raw milk, if you have anything to, to say about that? Yeah. So raw milk, I don't have any problems with raw milk. Um, I've tried raw milk before when I was younger, I didn't have any issues. Um, I just started drinking it again because I was drinking the whole uh, pasteurized, homogenized grass-fed milk, but how was that? I yeah, I don't like how it made me feel. It's just like the, the excess mucus production, I didn't like. Mm -hmm. So I'm just the raw milk is what I'm drinking now. And you consume quite a bit of, of raw milk, cheese, and yeah. dairy in general. No issues. Yeah. Um, if I if I have a pasteurized uh, milk, it's you know problems, but um, anything I have pasteurized now is just is cultured. Gotcha. But um, the thing about it is that I, I only consume like certain brands of dairy because they don't really I don't know why, but they don't give me problems uh, as much as if I consume like other brands. Um, Wallabies Organic is one of them. That one doesn't give me problems. Um, I think it's I think pronounced it Faye. The the Greek. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Fage, fage, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that one. And I have um, it's, a, it's uh, quark grass fed. Um, mm -hmm. wander, wander quark. That one. That those three don't give me problems. So those brands is what I stick to. Like I tried other brands of kefir and yogurt, and they just give me acne. So I I don't know why. It may have to do with the kind of cattle that they have, what they feed the cattle, and also, yeah. you know, depending on um, when the cows are milked during their pregnancy. I, I'm not an expert on this, but they have various levels of estrogen yeah. in them. So, like late into the pregnancy, if they're still milking their cattle to get you know maximum efficiency, it might have more hormones in the milk, which could lead to breaking out. But you know, it could be a, a whole bunch of different things, and, and who knows yeah. what it is. So, as as long as it's a certain brand of pasteurized milk. Uh, and and it's cultured, so they put the bacteria back into it. You don't seem to have any issues with that. No, no. That's cool. Have you ever tried goat's milk? I tried it once. <laughs> was it was it nasty? When I was a teenager, I didn't like it. The taste was just uh, it was too strong. Yeah, what they do in U.S. is um, 
I don't know if they keep the bucks too close to the females, lactating females, because if, if that's what's happening, the milk has like that, that buck funk to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I had some goat milk in the United States not that long ago, and it was gross. But yeah. like we raise goats, we produce milk, and it's very much like cow's milk. It's slightly different, but it's definitely sweet. And as yeah. long as you as long as you keep the buck away from the females, yeah, yeah, that funk doesn't permeate the milk. So that's just something to uh, a little um, tidbit about goat milk. So since going on, is it fair to say carnivorous diet? That's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. What first and foremost, like did you just do it on your own or have you heard of people having success on this sort of dietary approach? Like what made you, because it, you know, if, unless yeah. you're familiar with someone like let's say Sean Baker or some, some, some of these other people, it's just complete insanity to the average person to yeah. essentially cut out all plant foods or for the most part and just go on a, you know, animal based diet. Like how did you decide to do this? Why? Well, the thing about it was that, as I was saying, I mean, you say you didn't believe me, but um, Aubrey Thompson, you know, you can find her and whatnot. She has a clinic, but I went to her and she was telling me, you know, you need to try, go on this. Cause she said that I have a um, candida overgrowth mm -hmm. and um, you need to go on a, like a more animal based diet. She said, I can still eat greens, but they would have to be like low carb, you know, things like collard greens or something. I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. So I went on it for, I went on it twice. The first time I was eating a lot of nuts, <laughs> but she said, no, cut out the nuts. Cause I'm having problems with the nuts. And the second time I did it, I was eating uh, green vegetables, red meat, you know, meat, chicken. And I was eating um, Greek yogurt. That's it. And my, like all my acne went away. My skin was bright. You know, people ask me, you know, what are you doing? Um, I looked better, I felt better. And, um, and during that phase, I was trying to add back in like some of the like blueberries and other plant foods, but they would always break me out. Mm -hmm. So I really, so I really didn't know why that was happening. But every time I went back to that diet, my skin cleared up. So that made me think, you know, I should most likely be eating a animal based diet and, um, you know, God bless her, you know, she really helped me. And, um, so from there, you know, I just, let me look more into it because, you know, on YouTube now, like there's a lot more vegans than they were back in 2009, 2010. And I don't really, I mean, I, I, I don't really watch any of their videos that much. I mean, sometimes if they're having a debate, I'll watch it, but just to see what they're going to say. But now I'm more focused on, you know, what are the carnivores saying? What are the pro animal food people saying? So I, I prime watch health. I, I like his channel. I like your channel. Um, Stephanie keto person. I like her channel. Oh yeah. She's awesome by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. If you, if you uh, are not familiar with Stephanie keto person, you need to go and subscribe over there. Cause she's hella funny and you're not going to believe how old she is. I'll just say that much. And she's not the strict carnivore, but she's keto, but like carnivore yeah. heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and, uh, go on. Yeah. And, um, I, those people, um, Sean Baker, I subscribe. I watched some of his videos too um and so i decided you know let me try to add in more animal foods and you know things are getting better you know, i'm building more muscle mass um i'm not as tired i have more energy i mean the thing about it though is i still get acne because i'm not i'm not like i'm not eating like a more i'm not eating a keto diet anymore like i still have some some fruit sometimes and i still have raw honey sometimes and sometimes that breaks me out probably because of too many carbohydrates but um if i went well, back it's, on, it's, yeah. it's, it's not always food necessarily i mean acne could happen because of you know a variety of reasons or food could, yeah you know c combined with i don't know pollution yeah. or, or whatever you know things happen it's like yeah. Um, you know, like I've never really been one to break out, but I would once in a while and then going on a primarily meat 
based diet i did notice a difference so definitely food has a yeah. lot to do with it but it's not diet isn't everything that, that's all I want yeah to it's not it's not so as far as uh body recomposition like do you go to the gym do you work out and was that the case when you were vegan also uh when i was vegan i did not go to the gym when i was vegan i just more worked out at home push-ups and sit-ups and things like that calisthenics yeah body yeah weight yeah um i didn't go to the gym i mean now i go to the gym quite often mm -hmm. i mean i do work so it kind of it kind of gets in the way but i go as much as i can you know when i can um, well you just have the energy probably yeah <laughs> yeah so um right now uh about i think i weigh i weigh about right now about 180 to 185 between there sometimes i weigh less but that probably depends on like if i do more cardio or i do less you know depending on my workout and what i ate the night before um and i started exercising when i was like really going to the gym when i was 18 but the thing about it was that I put on like a huge amount of weight despite going to the gym because I was eating like three meals a day and a lot of meals I ate was like high fat, high carb together. Mm -hmm. And my weight, I, I went up to like 252 pounds. Whoa. Yeah, I, yeah, I got huge. How tall are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm really short. I'm only 5'6", so I, you know, like I'm wide. So Damn. So I was huge, and uh, <laughs> and this is this is before or during the vegan diet. Um, this is after this. This is when I was. Let me see, twenty four. No, okay. it's so like twenty four. You, you ditched veganism, or like in between yeah. one of your vegan phases. Yeah, in between yeah, one of my vegan phases. Yeah, so I was eating like a lot of big bowl of Cheerios with a whole bunch of cinnamon. Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah so i was putting on the weight but then i looked at myself in the mirror i'm like no too much weight so i i i cut down i just ate less i did more exercise i incorporated more animal foods and then um and the last time that i went vegan i was i went vegan for like a week <laughs> I, was like, no. I was like you no. were never vegan yeah I went, I went vegan for a week and then my strength started to wane. So I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not doing it. Said so you weren't done. And in, now in one now, week, you noticed strength uh, loss. Yeah, in one week. Yeah, in one week. Wow. Um, because I, I was doing a lot of exercise, and and I noticed that like the next day, I didn't recover. I didn't feel as good as I did the day before. Like I couldn't do as much exercise. So I'm like, it has to be the vegan diet again. You know. So um, I, I that's when I when I was, when I was um. 25, like I said, I was it was done with the vegan stuff. So now I'm like 180 now, 185. I mean, I want to lose a, a little more weight just just to be more lean, but like I'm doing a lot better now. I'm I, most eating, most of my calories are coming from the animal foods and coming from the plants. And the thing about is that a lot of people think that just because they're on a diet and they lose weight, that it's a healthy diet. That's not necessarily true. I mean, you can be on a you can eat anything and lose weight, you know, I, especially if you're on a vegan diet and you're losing weight, most likely you're going to lose a lot of muscle too. Yeah. Um, not just fat, which is what most people just want to lose is fat. Right. What the scale says is in everything, right? It's also yeah. about body composition and, you know, weighing enough is or not enough is a problem too, right? So it's definitely not as simple as some people may think because you know some of these vegans they'll be so skinny and they'll just equate being that with healthy and well no not really you gotta have you gotta have some muscle on you and you gotta yeah, have like, some fat on you too to be honest yeah true yeah you don't want to be too lean yeah right right so how long have you been it's been what about a year or so that you've been eating um yeah. I'm, I'm 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 finding a sneaky way to try to ascertain how old you are without asking you outright how old you are <laughs> yeah i'm 26 yeah okay okay i got oh, yeah, about a year about a year and yeah. um no issues so far like and any anything negative any drawbacks to eating this way no none at all no okay how's the How's the, how's the bathroom? Or you know, if it's none of my business, I, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, just tell me. Fine. That's normal. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going. 
six, seven times a day anymore. You're not once a week, you know, you're not, you're not terribly constipated and then no, I, mean, I, I, I still eat some, some plant foods. I'm, I'm not like purely just eating animal foods. Right. Yeah. Okay. Just not as much as I used to because, you know, I don't want to deal with all the ox. Like one time I was eating um, a lot of squash. I was still eating mostly animal foods, but I would eat like a lot of squash. And that was sending me to the restroom way too much. Uh -huh. So I, had to, I cut out the squash, you know. It's supposed to be one of the better um, plant foods. I'll eat squash once in a while. And man, that shit is stinky. This is, it's yeah, yeah, it's a lot of flatulence, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's no good. I, I mean, I don't mind it, whatever. I'm not, I'm not that. Yeah, once in a while, it's okay, but not something to eat, you know. Yeah. Regularly. So, do you like count calories or try to get a certain macronutrient ratio, or do you just eat uh, whatever feels good, making sure you just ingest enough meat? So, in other words, are you more keto or just low carb or like do you even care about any of that stuff um i think i'm mostly low carb okay at this point yeah i mean so, i mean some days i i, I do want to eat raw honey so i might buy honey and just have that with yogurt i might eat it from this you know with a spoon but yeah mostly low carb i'm not high carb but I, I don't i don't do well on high carb i um i get a lot of acne and like my energy fluctuates too much. Like I remember when I was when I was uh, about two years ago, I, I, I was obsessed with eating dates, <laughs> uh -huh. and um, I ordered a huge box of dates from uh, Seven Hot Dates, and um, and I ate I ate like half of the box, oh, like in like one sitting, because <laughs> you can't just have one. Cause like they taste so good, you know. So well, I was eating. Like, they do. I used to I used yeah. to buy medjool dates in Oakland, California, from a local farm, and man, yeah, I, I know what you mean, but it's really just sugar, really. That's yeah, it I mean. is. Yeah, and after I ate it, I was I had I had to take a nap because I was so tired, and then I woke up and I and I still felt tired, and I'm like, it has to be the dates. It took me a while to get off of them because they like they taste so good, and you know you just want to eat more and more and more. So I had to tell myself. What, what's gotta, your mood like on high carb versus low carb? Your mood? I'm more calm. I'm more relaxed. I I, I can take more stress. I can take more, um, you know, issues that life has and certainty of life. When I was vegan or like you know mostly plant based, you know, like I'm more sensitive. I'm more um, I'm more aggressive. Um, just like if someone says something mean, I, I get upset really fast. You know, like I said, I had the, the issue with depression, and at that time, I was mostly plant based. Mm -hmm. and, um, I don't plant uh, plant based just doesn't work for me. Like, just really I don't I don't think it works for anybody. Uh, not long term, I don't think it does. I mean, you know, <laughs> maybe there's some mutants here and there, some genetic freaks who could handle this stuff, but. It seems like eventually everybody either fails or deteriorates and, and keeps, you know, doing it while in denial. So that's just that's just my opinion, you know what I mean? I'm I'm no expert, but yeah. The results speak for themselves, right? I mean you have all these ex vegans turning to meat or nothing but meat and well, so far so good. We'll see what happens, but Yeah. Yeah, and and, and the thing about it too is that, you know, your average I don't know about in uh, Ecuador, but your average um, physician, you know, in the United States is going to tell you, go on a plant-based diet. Go on. That's all. That, most of them, that's all that they say is, you know, plant-based. And um, most people have problems with that, especially, you know, the beans, the legumes, the, uh, all the grains. They tend to make you bloated because of all the fiber and uh, you crack a lot of gas. I don't. It's, I don't touch beans ever. I don't mess with that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tar, the, uh, and half of the stuff that you know, half of the grains. Most people now in the U.S. are eating. Uh, even though they say you know meat is causing all disease, most people are eating. I work at a grocery store. Mm -hmm. Most people are buying the grains. It, it's they're not just buying a whole bunch of meat and maybe like you know a few oranges or whatever and some water. They're buying meat and then they're eating the meat with Honey Nut Cheerios. 
eating it with cinnamon toast crunch, all these high carb grains. And people think it's healthy because on, on, when you read nutritional facts, it has all these synthetic vitamins and minerals added to it. They're fortified foods. It's like, you know, that doesn't make the food healthy. No, um, it's, it's all crap. Definitely. I, I, yeah. I agree with you. I think yeah. America, perhaps the Western world in general, yeah. they eat a grain based diet. Yeah. Uh, over here, since you kind of mentioned Ecuador, the doctors, they don't recommend plant or vegan diet, but yeah. meat is meat and fat are definitely being demonized, whereas carbs are put on the pedestal and it's yeah, just nonsense. Yeah, and um, you know, most people here, you know, ha have some sort of weight problem or some other issue. Um, you know, you most people here, you know, they eat, I don't know about anywhere else, but they eat um quite often, you know, maybe like four or five meals a day plus snacks because you're always, you know, always hungry. Like when I eat, when I was eating high carb, if I like eat high carb, you you don't have this uh, the satiation, you don't have the satiety anymore because you're you're hungry, you get hungry faster, you know. It's true. No, it's you want to eat more food, and you know all those calories add up, and you know plus you know most people they don't have really have time to exercise because they're working like two two three jobs, you know, and yeah. all the calories build up, you know, as we're eating a predominantly animal based diet, you know, you can eat your steak and, you know, your lamb or whatever and have maybe a cup of milk, a glass of milk, you know, some cheese and you're full, but you're full for a lot longer time. You don't need to eat and take, eat, take snacks and juice and all that stuff, you know? So yeah. you're not consume as many calories as you would if you're eating like a high carb diet with some meat. It's, um, you know, the thing is people, you know, what are the people eating with the meat is, is the problem. For sure. But, but yeah. meat gets demonized. Meat gets yeah, all the exactly. blame. Definitely. So by comparison to what you used to eat as a plant-based eater to what you eat now, I know you don't count calories or macronutrients, but just by the number of meals or, the volume of the food that you consume, you know, how would how would the two different diets, as far as you're concerned, compare? I would say on the vegan diet, I was, or I guess to say plant based. I was eating about anywhere sixty to seventy percent, maybe carbohydrate, maybe say fifty to seventy percent carbohydrate. Um, as for protein, I would maybe say twenty percent. And fat is lowest, like maybe ten percent, maybe five percent. Not, not not too much fat, because I did try high fat vegan, but I don't know, that didn't work either. I mean, I still lost weight. On well, that you thing. know what Stephanie says about that, right? Yes, yes. Keto, <laughs> keto, vegan keto doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a paradox. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> so um. Now, you know, I'm eating an animal based diet, you know, most of my I would say I'm probably eating maybe 50%, maybe 40% fat, mm -hmm. and 50% um, protein and the rest is, you know, carbs, it depends on the day that might fluctuate, but um, I'm not eating as many carbs as I used to. So definitely not ketogenic ratios, but you still feel great. eating. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 very much like you. Sometimes I'll eat a lot more fat than sometimes I'll eat as much as 80% fat and uh, I don't know. For me, I, I like my protein, man. I got to say I like my I like yeah. fat too, but I got to get that protein in. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the protein really does help, yeah. Totally. Um but yeah, that's about it. I um that's basically where I'm at now, but I but I do want to try the um the the carnivore diet. I do want to cut out. I want to see um how you know how it feels to not have any plants at all. You know, no fruit, nothing. I mean, I I did try it one day. I didn't. I had a kefir and like um red meat and some yogurt. I didn't feel bad or anything. Yeah. Um, I do want to try that, you know, because uh, I mean, despite eating, you know, sweet potatoes once in a while and carrots once in a while, the sweet potatoes, I'm kind of, I'm getting tired of, you know, having them once in a while because, you know, every time I eat them, I, I, I feel, I don't really feel like they're, 
they're really helping me. Um, they they do make me go to the restroom more often too. To me, they're just too sweet now. It's like things that were kind of bland before. Nowadays, it's just crazy how sweet they are, and I just yeah, can't fathom true. how I would just eat that stuff like nothing. Yeah, now it just makes me kind of. Uh, a little nauseous sometimes. Yeah, you, yeah, especially yeah. when you bake the sweet potato, it gets it, the sugars in it, the starches in it are concentrated. Caramelized, yeah. yeah. When you um boil it, it's not as bad, but once you bake it, it's you know, especially the uh, the the Japanese yam. The other sweet potato is not as sweet, but that one is really. We got this. We got this white sweet potato here in Ecuador. If you let that sit after you harvest it for like a week or two. Yeah. Dude, it's like eating pure sugar, man. That stuff is so sweet. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's a white sweet potato. I don't know what it's yeah. over here. They're all called camote. So okay. that's what that is. I was going to ask the chat if anybody had any questions for you or whatever. You guys okay. go ahead and sh shoot. Maybe if Dell feels like it, he could uh he could answer. But um who are you who are you checking for um these days in in the carnivore community like who do you um you know who do you checking out these days following and you know a anything along those lines uh i'm following primal health stephanie keto person i'm following you sean baker um what else am i following that's frank tufano Right um, CBA and following. Um, I think that's about it. I don't think I'm following anybody else that really promotes a, a plant based, I mean, uh, you know, carny diet. Um, right. you follow the vegan community still, like just out of morbid curiosity, yeah, I, maybe? Um, like <laughs> um what are I following the vegan community? I do follow one guy. His name is a vegan athlete. I think I don't know if that's his username or not, but he's not. He's not one of the, like the militant. I don't know. Yeah, if he's, he's pretty cool. His he has an interesting yeah, life. Yeah. Yeah, he's not a militant vegan. I, I like his channel. Yeah, he's he's not bad. Mm -hmm. Um, I follow him, and um, that's about it. I mean, I was following vegan gains, but I stopped following him. I don't really like his personality too much. Um, but I do watch some of his debates. I think that some of his debates I do like to watch at times. But um, that's about it. As for uh, vegan people on YouTube that I follow, it's uh, just vegan athlete. Okay. Hey, we have a question, I think. What, this is from Millennial Prepster, what could be said or what point could have been brought up during your vegan phase, I'm guessing, to make you change your mind sooner. Is there something that would have convinced you, if I'm paraphrasing this correctly, convinced you to ditch the death diet sooner than you than you did? Um well ideally, I mean, if I met someone that that looked so healthy and vibrant that it would shatter and, and you know, and they were able to explain why you know eating plants and whatnot isn't good and animal-based diet is best and they and you know they told me that if you go on this diet you know you will do a lot better and whatnot and they looked really good yeah of course i wouldn't give it a try but um that's an, an ideal situation um but most likely you know like when you're really invested into veganism mm -hmm. Um, it's extremely difficult for you to get out of that mindset. <laughs> like I remember, um, when I first was on this Sabi diet, you know, my family members were telling me, oh, you know, like, what are you eating? Because, you know, I was losing a lot of weight. I was you know, looking pretty thin. Um, and, um, I was telling them, oh, you, oh, you are eating me. You're going to get sick. You need to eat, um, animal foods i mean needy plant foods and um, I, was, I was very people used to ask me oh you know why shouldn't we eat carrots and stuff like that you know i started explaining because oh they're domesticated they're not healthy because Sabi says something about like 
the uh, the carrots and whatnot, the domesticated fruits and vegetables, they're uh, electrically um, charged in a in a way that makes them not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. You can you can you can read about his his uh his philosophy. It's it's, Woo -woo. it's it's very odd, you know. I thought David Wolf was out there, but he he beats David Wolf by a mile. And um, I used to say all those things, you know. I used to say I used to be very very militant. You say, oh, you're eating the animals. The animals have lives too, you know. They are sentient beings just like we are, and we shouldn't eat them. We can make the world a better place if we just go vegan and, you know, yeah. Yeah. But. There's, there's a, another question, a little bit personal. If you don't want to answer it, that's fine. But can you compare uh, okay. your vegan sex drive versus now your carnivore sex drive, and do you intermittent fast? Um, as a vegan, I'm um, saying that my sex drive was – I would say I didn't really care about that stuff. All I really cared about was trying to be like the best I could be, like trying to reach like the ultimate um, spiritual, well, there's all things I was trying to reach, but really I just wanted to transcend being a human, you know? Like even now I still kind of have that mindset, I mean. I got you. you. Know. Uh, so. I asceticism you were more of an ascetic uh, uh yeah. not a monk per se but yeah. kind of in that vein okay. yeah I, I i wanted to basically transcend death and human suffering and all that and you know i thought if i go on this vegan diet i hear to all these principles eventually if i stick with it long enough i will reach there you know in this life i won't need to you know go through the karmic cycle and do it all over again and things like that and Nirvana, I'll become closer to God. yeah I'll become closer to God the source you know what you ever you want to call it um you know I mean even now I still have that mindset I, I still want to be like reach my genetic potential whatever that is and I feel like um as for sex drive yeah I have a better sex drive now I have more energy now but I'm more focused on reaching my genetic potential i don't know maybe you know that's not really logical but i mean completely logical but well that, that's you you know so and do you intermittent fast or do you just eat two three meals a day yeah I, 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 I intermittent fast i'm just not i'm just not hungry you know as much you know what's now the I'm, protocol 16 8 or what is it so i eat one meal a day wow. um and, and if i have a uh, like a snack I have like a glass of raw milk or like a little yogurt if I have a snack, but like I don't really have like a meal until it depends on like if I'm working too. So like if I work from like like um, two to ten, so I'll work from two to ten and I'll come home and I'll eat something and I won't eat again until maybe like eight or nine or you know seven to like nine. Sometimes I eat later depending on how I feel. Like if I go to the gym. I won't. I don't eat like exactly after I come from the gym. Most of the time, I wait like a few hours. Um, I do. Well, when you're eating like an animal-based diet, you just you, you don't. The satiety is is uh, is potent, so you don't want to eat. That's you know, true. you don't feel like you need to eat two, three meals a day. You know. Yeah. Uh, do you deal with haters, or is that not really a problem for you? And if so, how? No, I don't. No, I don't really have any issues with people. Um, like no one's judging you for ditching the vegan diet. It's not a no, not really a concern. No, I no, I'm more of a, like a reserved person. I'm not really. I don't I'm not really, really interact with people that much. Um, I mean, you know, on YouTube, you know, some people come and say, "Oh, you know, you you know, you just did it wrong," or you know, you should try this. I'm like, no, man. Okay, I did the research. Okay. I do not need to try. I tried every vegan diet that there is. I don't need to go and try another vegan diet, you know. So, um, but I said, uh, you know, if if someone is an ex-vegan and they go and they they start eating animal foods for the nourishment, they, you know, and anybody says, oh, you know, you did it wrong, come back again, like no, you know, if you if if you are if if the blood tests are better you look better you feel better 
you know, then why not stick with it? Why go back to your inferior self? You know what I'm saying? On a, on a terrible diet. Yeah. What about organs or high meat? Do you mess with any of that stuff? Oh, I don't mess with high meat, man. I'm not there yet. Eventually, but I do eat liver. I do eat heart. Kidney I'll have sometimes. All uh, cooked. Yeah, all cooked. Um, that's about it. I mean, yeah, I don't really eat any other more organ meats. I mean, I am looking for testicles, but that's hard to get. Um, I used to eat, I used to get them from a grocery store called American Food Basket, but they don't sell them anymore. So yeah, but yeah, pork, I am. Pork fryers, pork. Rocky Mountain oysters. Really? It's hard to uh, get those. Uh, well, oh, you don't eat pork. No, I don't eat pork. No. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, right. Um, another question I just noticed was how did your family react to either going vegan or ditching the vegan diet, if if at all? Yeah, so when I was vegan, <laughs> I used to have arguments with, you know, my family members and they used to say, Oh, well, you, what I, you know, what I'm saying doesn't make sense. I'm like, yeah, of course it makes sense. You know, I used to get very upset just because they didn't they didn't agree with me or they were eating meat. And I'm like, you know, you guys are just murdering all these innocent creatures and they don't deserve it. Um, you know, and then when I, when I finally moved away from veganism, you know, my mom was like, you know, Oh, you know, you look better now. You know, I thought you were like basically just going to waste away on the, you know, on this diet. But the thing about it is that, you know, if I didn't end up in a hospital, I most likely I'll probably still be vegan. I mean, not, I don't know if I would still be vegan today, but I would have probably went for like a year, two, three, four, five years on that same Sabi diet, trying to reach um, the source, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Did, did your mom pinch your cheeks? <laughs> nah, um, but yeah, the the um, the animal based diet is basically, you know, I'm convinced now that it's it's the best diet. I mean, the thing about it is that, I mean, sometimes I do. <laughs> sometimes I'm not really like big on meat, to be honest. I mean, I do eat it, but I'm not like huge on meat. I mean, I, I prefer dairy. I prefer raw milk. Um, cheese and yogurt and stuff like I could eat that all the time. I'm that's really interesting. Big. That's that's very yeah. interesting because a lot of people in this, if you could call it a community, and I hesitate to do that, are very much anti dairy, and dairy's just been demonized unfairly, in my opinion. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because most of the time, you know, dairy comes from um, feeble, ill Sick animals. animals. Yeah. yeah. And they, uh, I read the book um, by Dr. Ron Schmid. Uh, he's the other one that helped me, you know, move away from the uh, vegan diet. Uh, the Untold Story of Milk, and he talks about the history of milk. I read that whole book, and it's great. He talks about, you know, like how, you know, dairy became domesticated and how, you know, some people can uh, consume dairy and others can't. I think that's what really comes down to like if you if you can have dairy and not have any issues then i yeah that in individual should consume the dairy but if you have problems you know it's probably best to stay away like for me you know um eggs i don't know i don't know if it's the egg white or if it's the egg yolk but i've tried to eat cooked eggs since i was a kid or, or um eat you know i raw eggs i can tolerate a lot better than cooked eggs but Every single time I have to cook eggs, it just makes me feel like I want to regurgitate. I don't know what's what's in the eggs, but I don't know. The whites have uh, avatine or something like that, anti nutrient. Yeah. Um, maybe you have an issue assimilating the egg protein. I don't know, but raw eggs are okay. Yeah, raw eggs are okay. Yeah. But do you ever do you ever yeah. blend like yolks with cream and a little bit of honey, maybe? I love to drink that stuff. No, no, I don't do that. I'm just, if I have raw eggs, I'll just I'll just mix it plain and drink it straight. Gotcha. Um, I don't like to mix it with things, but I don't really have raw eggs often. Like once in a blue moon, I'll I'll eat like you know four raw eggs or something. Are they There's pastured? Or are they like pastured chicken eggs or just um, regular eggs? I get eggs from um, Whole Food, the, the vital the vital farm eggs. 
Um, I, don't I don't know. I don't. I mean, they they're supposedly pasture raised. I don't know. I don't know what they're feeding the animals because unless you have chickens yourself, you don't really know. Of course. Well, they could be high in omega six fatty acids if they feed the chickens yeah. a lot of grains. So yeah. that could be that could be why you're feeling suboptimally when you eat them. Uh, yeah. Somebody was asking kind of a silly question, I guess, but a uh, potent topic on this channel, at least. So did you ever notice getting those vegan eyes, those crazy eyes while on the vegan diet? Um, yes, yes, yes. You did um, get those? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, when, when I started eating like more, like more fruit, like a lot of more fruit and layer bars and stuff. Like my yeah, fruitarians health. got it bad, man. Fruitarians yeah. really got it bad. Um, yeah, my mental health is like really plummeted. Like I wasn't sleeping. I was staying up like I was staying up until like eight, like eight or nine or ten in the morning. I used to just, like just stay up all night on the computer or just um writing or you know, just rolling in bed or doing something else. Then I would go to sleep, then I would wake up and do the same thing and the same thing. And like my eyes just like, like you know, under my, I think I was born with eye bags. I'm not sure, but like around my eyes are like extremely dark. Like they're dark now, but they were extremely just basically black. Mm -hmm. And my eyes just looked more um, uh, crazy and wild. And um, yeah. That's when I was eating like, all the fruit, like all the bananas and dates and stuff. It like, just, yeah. I'm not really, I'm not really sure about how, like how um, it affects the brain. Like if you eat like a more meat based diet or a more carb based diet. But I did read that um that you know the carbs um, tend to have tend to increase serotonin. Or I'm not sure if, if that had anything to do with. How yeah, was, I don't know exactly how, but they're definitely excitatory, right? It's like kind of yeah. like a drug, kind of like a performance enhancing yeah. drug. You get you get this spike and then you crash, right? And, and yeah. then you want more. So and and you know, there's sometimes people draw a comparison between how our body metabolizes sugar and how it metabolizes alcohol, and it's in similar ways, which you know. And not to say that sugar and carbs are really like a hard drug or anything like that, but there's definitely some, it seems like there's some similarity there. So maybe that's why someone who's on a high sugar diet looks like a meth head, right? And we kind of, yeah. we kind of perceive that. So yeah. anyway, I don't see any more questions in the chat and we've been on for an hour and a half. I'm going to have to fix that that little mishap splice those two interviews together what well, well, okay. ended up being two and i'll re-upload it again so i'm going to private this video right after we're done but if uh anybody has anything else they want to ask or if you want to add anything um i say let's do that and let's wrap it up if you don't mind um yeah i do have one more thing to say before yeah, yeah um, definitely go ahead we'll be close um just to anyone that's vegan i mean if you want to stay vegan um it's, it's ideally you should not but if you do want to stay a vegan look into the sprouted grains like eat more sprouted grains more soaked grains nuts seeds um Make sure that they're at least they're prepared properly at least and you know read about the negative effects of the fruits and the vegetables because you know they tell you all these great things but they don't talk about the oxalates the phytates the the saponins the salicylates um the lectins they don't talk about anything about that they just make it seem like you know you read about spinach and it says oh spinach has all this calcium but no one talks about the the, the oxalic acid it's like you know, just because spinach has all this calcium in it does not mean that your body will absorb the calcium. Like, it, it's not logical, but, you know. It, and then they put, like, all of these greens in a blender and just blend up all the greens. You know, like, all of them. And, and like, they're all they're all high in oxalates. So, like, what are you thinking? Just because you they drink that and then they take their vitamin pill, you know, yeah. that has, you know, it's. It's insanity. Yeah. 
Are you, there was one last question. Are you reading any books currently? Uh, no, I'm not. Um, the last book I read was a book by an author named Ben Bova called Transhumanism. Mm -hmm. But that was basically like a fiction book about a girl that has a type of brain cancer, glioblastoma. And I guess he edited her genes to where um, she, she was cured from the cancer and that she couldn't get it. And he edited his genes so he can um, remain young, but uh, it wasn't a bad book. I enjoyed it, but currently, no, I'm not really reading anything right now. Okay, that's cool. Well, on that note, unless you still want to add anything else, I would like to thank you for contacting me, for coming through, sharing your story. Uh, I enjoyed talking to you, and you know, maybe in a few months, six months to a year or something, we could maybe do a follow-up, see how your diet's going, where you're at, and so on and so forth. Maybe, hey, maybe you'll be a vegan again by then. Who knows? Oh, no, no, not yet. <laughs> no, not anymore, man. Never, oh, never oh. say never. Never say never. <laughs> okay. Well, right on. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming through and uh, contributing asking questions so on and so forth watching definitely uh giving the video a thumbs up as all of you i'm sure no doubt did so thank you all for coming through thank you for watching thank you dell and uh stay in touch and maybe we could do a follow-up sometime uh, in the future all right Connor. all right man take it easy yep, everyone. Yep, god bless you yeah. peace